Hey everybody, how you doing? We are entering chapter 8 today looking at circles and chords. So we are going to be talking about uh, some things we've actually already been using. It's interesting in the book that uh, they wait until chapter 8 to define these terms. But we've actually already used some of them in the back part of chapter 7. So there'll be a little bit of catch up here, but I think some of this is, uh, is common sense knowledge that you already have. Let's go ahead and move right into it. So we've talked about uh, circles before. You you've have, have done already some things with circles. Um, we're going to define the word here, though. So a circle is a set of all points in a plane given a distance from a given point. Um, so everything on circle C is the same distance from C. Uh, radius, we've already talked about in the past, or radius is a segment from the circle center to the edge of the circle. Um, and all radii are congruent. You've had this before. This is review. No need to write this down, probably. Um, some additional things. A chord of a circle is any segment whose endpoints are on the circle. We used this in the last lesson. Um, so again, you probably already have this. A chord would be like LM, the segment LM. Uh, not line LM, but segment LM, where it, it has two points on the circle. That's a chord. A radius, like QR, is also a chord, but it just is a particular chord that passes through the, uh, I said radius there, that's diameter, that passes through the circle center. A chord that goes through the circle center is the diameter. Okay, and that is composed of two radiuses. That's twice the radius length. And then a secant is any line that intersects a circle in two places. So if a line goes through the circle and continues going in both directions like line LM or line QR, um, then those would be secants. Okay, that's, I think, a new term for you. Make sure you have that one. If a line intersects the interior of a circle, then it contains a chord. The line itself would be a secant and it contains a chord, the segment that's inside the circle. That's the chord postulate, okay? Basically, it's the definition of a chord. Um, a theorem here that we can use in conjunction with that is that if a radius is perpendicular to a chord, then it bisects the chord. It's kind of an interesting relationship. You can't draw a chord in a circle and have it intersect the radius um, such that the radius is perpendicular to the chord and not have it bisect the chord. So you can't draw a perpendicular chord to a radius in any other way than that it bisects the radius. So anytime you see a 90 degree intersection between a radius and a chord, that is a bisected chord. Kind of an interesting thing. It's not immediately intuitive, but if you try to play with it in your brain, um, there's no other way to arrange that. It's an interesting thing. So let's, let's uh, do a proof with that together. Circle O with OC perpendicular to AB. AB is a radius, sorry, is a chord, and OC is a radius. So we have these two things. That's given. We're going to draw two more radii, OA and OB. So there's these lines here. And we've just created ourselves an isosceles triangle, right? Line postulate means, just means we're drawing a line. Um, you could also say accessory line. You're just drawing something, okay? Angles ODA and ODB are right angles. ODA and ODB are right angles. That's given to us. Okay, um, in the definition of the given, and that's just the definition of perpendicular. All right, ODA, triangle ODA, and triangle ODB are right triangles. Well, by definition, if they have right angles in there, then they're right triangles. Definition of the right triangle. OA then is congruent to OB, uh, and that's just because they're both radii, right? And all radii of a circle are congruent. My picture is covering that up. All radii of a circle are congruent. There you go. Oops. There you are. Let's move on. So, OD is congruent to itself. That's the reflexive property. Um, and triangle ODA then is congruent to triangle ODB. Why is that? Let's take a second and look at that. We've got uh, congruent lines, congruent lines, and we've got this thing as itself. We've got right tri triangle angles here. This is a right triangle, and I can use, what is this? Hypotenuse leg. Yes, hypotenuse leg, postulate of congruence or theorem of congruence. AD then is congruent to BD because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So that demonstrates that D is the midpoint of AB, right? Definition of a midpoint. So this shows that uh, when a radius intersects a chord at a 90 degree angle, that it does so at the midpoint of the chord, then it bisects the chord into two halves. That exact same theorem can be backed through. So we said before, if a radius intersects a chord at a 90 degree angle, then it bisects the chord. We can also say if a radius bisects a chord, that's not a diameter, then it is perpendicular to the chord. 
And so um, this is the exact same information. It's just going at it another way. Okay, so let's uh, look at another one. The line in the plane of a circle that is perpendicular bisector of a chord contains the center of the circle. That's a little bit harder to think. You have a chord and you have a line going through a circle um, and it is a perpendicular bisector of a chord then that line must contain the diameter uh, and it must contain a radius, so it must contain the center of the circle. Um, so here's a picture. Here we have a chord and we could draw this line. This, I'm sorry, this isn't a line. It should be a line going through the circle. And it, if just like this has to be a radius to bisect the chord, um, if it's a line going through and it bisects the chord, then it must have the radius in it, which means it must contain the center of the circle. Okay, find the diameter of a circle, O, if OD is 3 inches, OD is 3 inches, and uh, AB, this line here, is 8 inches. Well, now I have two right triangles, right? I've got a 4-inch side here and a 3-inch side here. I can use the Pythagorean theorem to determine the length of the hypotenuse, which will be a radius. Um, once I have the radius, I can multiply that by 2, and I'll have the diameter. So let's see what they do here. AD is one half of AB. AD is one half of AB, right? So half of 8 is 4. That's what we just said here. This is 4. Um, OA squared equals 3 squared plus 4 squared. That's the Pythagorean theorem, right? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. We're going to solve that out. We're going to find that OA is 5. And so the diameter is twice the radius. Radius is 5. So the diameter is 10. By the way, this is an interesting thing that hasn't come up yet. In the discussion of right triangles, you, you know about the 45-45 triangle. You know about the 30-60-90 triangle. Um, one common right triangle that you will encounter frequently is the 3-4-5 triangle, where one leg of the triangle is some multiple of 3. Uh, the other leg of the triangle is that same multiple of 4. And the hypotenuse will be that same multiple of 5. So 3-4-5 or 6-8-10 or 9-12-15. How fast am I at math? Um, it's three or four or five times the same number. Um, and you'll encounter that a lot. If you have a right triangle and one leg is a multiple of three and the other leg is the same multiple of four, you don't have to do the Pythagorean theorem. The hypotenuse is that same multiple of five. Okay, so just save you a little bit of time there. Uh, theorem. In congruent circles or in the same circle, two chords are congruent if and only if they are equidistant from the centers. So if you have a chord, uh, circle A and circle B and they're congruent, and chord QR is the same distance from chord PN, I would say as chord PN is from the center here, then um, they're the same length. So that has to do with the fact that in a circle, the length of the chord is going to be, be proportional to how much of the radius uh, there is before it intersects it. Um, as the radius gets longer in proportion to the chord, the chord is going to be smaller. If it's way over here, it's a tiny chord. If it's way back here, it's a big chord. So as long as it's the same distance along that radius, then that chord is going to be the same length. And that's true in the same circle or in two congruent circles. Okay, moving on. So find AB and GF if CD is congruent to HI. Um, so CD is congruent to HI, which means these circles are congruent. Because the circle is a set of points some distance from the center. And if the radii of circle C and circle H are the same, then circle C and circle H are congruent circles. You would have to prove that, but you could say that as step one after the, after the given. Okay, So the radiuses are congruent, and C, the distance from C to E is, is equal to the distance from H to J, which means that they are uh, equidistant from the centers of their circles. Okay, uh, AB, this line here, is 5y minus 3. And GF is 2Y plus 9. Well, we know that if these are congruent circles and they're the same distance from the center, then these chords are congruent. So I can set these two uh, mathematical statements together as equal to each other, solve for Y, plug the, plug the answer back into AB and figure out how big AB is. Let's do that. So AB has to be the same as GF, so let's set those two statements as equal to each other. Let's solve for Y, shall we? So we're going to combine like terms, and then we're going to divide by 3 y is equal to 4. Then I've got to plug that back in to 5y minus 3, and I will discover that 5 times 4 minus 3 is 17. So ab equals 17. gf, because it's the same, has to be also 
17. I can plug it back in or I could just say they're equal to each other. Okay, you'll be doing this kind of stuff later on in the class. Let's look at this next one. So I have one circle that has two radii that are intersecting two chords. And there's another radii drawn here for me um, that it has a length of 13. So I know that all of these radii equal 13. Um, this, I want to know how much of it is used up before the intersection of the chord and what's left over after it. Okay, so find CH and HB. Find CH and HB. If AD and GE are both 10, so we know these chords are congruent, which means at the same distance from the circle. Um, and so they're, uh, I can use you know, either one of them that I wanted to. Um, so if this is 10, then that means that this right here is 5. It's half of it. I can use the Pythagorean theorem 5 and 13 as the hypotenuse of the triangle to determine the length here. And then this little fraction is just going to be what's left over from 13. Okay, so let's do that together. JE uh, is half of GE. GE is 10, so JE is 5. Okay, we already said that. Now, the Pythagorean theorem, they wrote it funny here. They're solving for CJ. Um, CJ squared plus JE squared equals CE squared. CE is 13. Um, and this is 5. So 13 squared minus 5 squared is this thing squared. Uh, they wrote it having already taken the square off of this. So it's the square root of 13 squared minus 5 squared. And that's not the most helpful way to write it, but that is right. Um, so 13 squared minus 5 squared is 144, which the square root of which is 12. So JC is 12. The whole thing is 13 because all radii are congruent. So this little fraction left over has to just be 1. Um, so that is true of CF, and it's also true of CB, okay? So that's how you do that. We'll do some more examples like that in class. That's all she wrote, folks. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments field below, and I'll get to them as quickly as I can, or I'll address them in class tomorrow. Until then, God bless you. Jesus loves you, and so do I. Good night.